Hello and welcome back to another video. You join me a week and a half after me producing this piece of artwork. Today we're going to be discussing this painting which is seems simple enough but actually decompressing and physically looking at a piece of artwork doesn't really have anything behind it in terms of ideas or themes or anything along those similar lines. This one if any of you didn't know is painted through subtraction. Subtraction is a theme of method that I made up <laughs> basically. you The only thing that you have is a limited set of colours from an oil painting, from oil paints that you use to produce shapes, circles, tones, anything you want onto a canvas without anything in mind. The only thing that pops up is through the subconscious because you don't really have a theme or anything. You could technically suggest that the theme is experience and subconsciousness but at the end of it all it might not actually work. It's just a nice way to clear your head as well. The only limitation and controlment of it is the colours that you use. I use a limited palette for most of my subtraction paintings because it then becomes much more about trying to balance out the colours rather than the actual composition itself. So with this one I pretty much stuck to the cool, the cool colours of the blue tones. So in simple words I used a lot of blue, <laughs> some white and some black. There are like hints from very light blue all the way to a purpley colour. I allowed the purple in because it was much more of a cooler colour than a warmer colour compared to going the opposite way into the warmer colours because warmer colours against blue colours tend to st stand out a bit more compared to cool colours within each other. They just don't tend to fight as much and shout out for the attention. Here we have it. This is the final piece. It took me about 40 minutes. They don't actually tend to, in long periods of time. You don't have to spend like hours and hours on it. But saying that the sizes are very similar, I tend to stick around the A2 size to A3 size. The larger the canvas it is, the harder it is for me to produce a piece of artwork with my oil paints because my methods with the paintbrush and the silicone nibs and scrapers are very limited to a certain size. I have tried larger sizes, but I have struggled with it. And I do find I make far more mistakes than I do with smaller canvases. Does not mean they don't value they aren't as varied as much, but when I do a larger canvas, it normally is about 15 to 20 goes of trying to produce something on that canvas. And also from a artist's perspective, if you do tend to sell that piece of artwork, it's very hard to get insurance for it to be able to post abroad or within the UK. And a lot of companies don't actually insure it, but ones that do, it's very, very pricey. So then you have to kind of add that to the price of the artwork we're going to digest and see what I can actually see in this painting. This was, one was actually quite hard. I have had some very hard subtraction artworks that I've found really hard to find out on what is actually going on within my subconscious. For this one, it was exactly the same compared to the last one, which I will leave a link in the description box if you want to check that out. That one was very straightforward. It, as I was painting it, I realised, oh my god, this is actually what it is. It was more towards the end, it wasn't towards the very beginning, because and then I, that's kind of drawing it rather than it drawing me. This one took a very long while, even a week and a half later, I'm still a bit, I'm an anahring, but I feel like if I just sit down and talk through it, then eventually my mind will make itself up. <laughs> I All I could see was an umbrella, so the umbrella part is just here. And you've got one line and you don't have another line but I thought maybe it was transparent so it was a bit abstracted so that side you can see from the sunlight and then the other two three sides you couldn't really see because of all the objects and and everyday items then I thought actually this bit here looks a bit like when you open a door and the sun is coming through at a certain angle and then I thought maybe that's a reflection so maybe that's like I don't know, out in the garden or on a patio or somewhere house, housey, <laughs> if that's even a word. Then I realised actually there's this really nice still bit in the middle and it kind of reminds me of a horizon line, vertical then horizontal. These bits here have much more mark making rather than just blending in, seem to pop out of the surface a lot more compared to the ones, like I said, are blended. They tend to go 
towards the back because I don't have as much texture physically protruding from the canvas. And then I sat down and I'm actually quite an avid gardener. I'm very much an amateur. I kill a lot of plants <laughs> more than I do make plants. I do it for the fun of it. I do very basic gardening techniques and this is where I began to see the influence of watching Spring Watch and Gardener's Ward begin to play into it because I now think this is actually my garden through blue and mid-tones. Obviously none of you have seen my garden so it was quite complex. It's quite a weird shaped garden because it's not square. It's at an, at an end of a terrace so the instead of it being square like that sharpment of a garden it's very much more like a weird triangle shape because you've got other houses on the other side so the shape of the garden isn't normal and I think that is where the start of it happens so this is the start of the line here and then I realised actually parts of it look disjointed because of the different areas of my garden that I have. I have bits that are dead zones and I have bits that are fully flourished and bits that are needing extra pieces onto it. And as I go along, I was like, oh my God, parts of these resemble parts of my garden. Not as a simple sit down and draw exactly what it is. It's very much a, a abstracted version of it because it's it's not complete. There are elements of it instead of it being all correctly perspective and composition wise. Saying that, anyone who can look at this, they might see something completely different and might be more relevant to them. But for me, this is my garden. This is kind of a self portrait and expression version of how and what my garden feels like. That at certain points you get this really lovely sunshine in the morning coming through my windowsill. So obviously this bit can also act as a windowsill, whereas the rest of it is very shaded. And then I've also got this really nice patio running through my garden, which I believe is the horizon line. And I've got planters of all different shapes and sizes that I've made and some that I've bought. And they're just really, really odd. And I do believe that's where some of the shapes have come around. And I do think some of the shapes have come from watching so much Gardener's World and Spring Watch as well. If any of you watch that type of program and you can see something physical within this painting that relates to that gardening world, please let me know. <laughs> it's not just me, I'm very old from for my age. There's nothing better than watching a bit of Gardener's World at the end of the day. The fact that it's blue and it still represents a garden, you may think, why, why is it not why is it not green? Would green not suit it better? You know, it doesn't have to be green to represent life. You know, blue is a very well-known colour for agua or also known as water. It, you know, it doesn't have to necessarily represent a garden. It could represent an ocean and landscapes. Blue is very, well, back in the day, it was represented as royalty, especially towards the Renaissance period and, and towards the figure of Mary as well. But for me, this time, blue isn't just a, a, isn't a representation of Jesus or God or anything religious. It's much more to do with the environment. Everything at the end of the day is reliant on that resource. Bits and pieces of it are still coming together in terms of the idea of what I can see. I feel like this much more represents, a, from a talking perspective, the idea that I'm trying to get across compared to the other painting that I did it's much more about what the what is physically there rather than the discussion part whereas this one's much more about discussion and what others can see rather than just me whereas the other one feels like much more personal this one is still personal but you need a discussion to be able to figure out what it is and I do like that because it makes the artwork a lot more interesting and because you can't figure it out it, for me it gets annoying because I'm quite stubborn if any of you haven't realized this Stubborn in a good way, like I don't like to just lie down and admit, admit defeat. I will keep on going until I find out what the piece of pe piece of artwork is, until I get a resolve. But even then, I'll still be discussing in the background, going, "Oh, is it actually that? Is it still that?" But for now, for me, I identify this as my garden, as 
a experience of gardening and how mentally it has, it has saved me. Yes, I haven't completely ticked off mental health. I don't think anyone has because we always have our ups and downs for a reason because life isn't just always happiness. <laughs> it can be quite challenging and for everyone it's an experience for a different experience for everyone else. But for me this is gardening and a very abstracted version where you've got the sunlight coming through as this white pure blue arrangement and the blue is the different bits of water that you add to your garden with some shapes that kind of look like planters or trellises and then dark bits are the negative space, dark negative space which you don't actually have room for any different types of plants. Hope that has not baffled your mind too much. If you guys have any questions about this painting please leave it in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this and also don't forget to check out my description box the links to all my social medias and also my ebay selling account which is where I sell all my artworks that I feature on my channel and yeah I hope I've talked you all out <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed this and I shall see you guys next time. Bye for now.